Today, spiritualists from all over America go for their holidays to Camp Chesterfield in Indiana. This psychic holiday camp offers all manner of methods for communicating with the dead. In the museum and art gallery are a range of treasures said to come from beyond the grave, including spirit paintings depicting life after death. They claim these gems and arrowheads are gifts from the spirits. There's everything here that a spiritualist holidaymaker could wish for. Camp leader Louise Irvine. Spiritualists uh, expect to have family gatherings, whether they are in the physical body or out of the physical body. They still come to gather together in this beautiful holiday atmosphere. And they consider this to be a family reunion, just the same as other people throughout the world have a reunion in a park or at the lake. Uh, somewhere where all all of the family gathers together from great distances and so to them uh, they do this here their family reunion in the body and out many of them describe the tremendous burdens and weights that they feel as they have come here just simply being released and just leaving them like a vaporous cloud uh, they find that they are in a place like none other that they have ever been in before upon this earth. It is, it's hallowed ground, it's holy ground. The camp offers a strange mixture, Christian guidance with Red Indian spirit guides. It's exhilarating when visitors hear from their dead relatives. One time, uh, during a storm, the vibrations were very, very high because of all the energy. And the two worlds must have been very close together because my, my aunt, who had only been gone for about six months, came to me. And I was so shocked that I couldn't talk to her. <laughs> and uh, all I could say was, oh. And she repeated the word for me. And then she says, Jimmy, don't you realize who I am? And then I says, uh, no, and she says, I'm your aunt Myrtle. And then uh, I, I talked to her a little bit, and she told me how wonderful it was on the other side and how well she was getting along. And it was fantastic, and it was a very uplifting uh, experience for me. This Brazilian psychologist claims that when he goes into trance, he's in direct contact with the spirits of great painters of the past. And he turns out old masters in a matter of minutes. He says that Van Gogh works through his fingers. Under the scrutiny of the art department of Leeds Polytechnic, Luis Gasparetto produces the unmistakable brush strokes by slapping the paint on with his fingers. When the mood of the music changes, so does the style of his paintings.
session, Gasparetto produced eight crayon drawings and five oil paintings in less than an hour, and every one carried the signature of a master. But do they convince the experts? I thought it's incredible. Um, absolutely wonderful. <laughs> There's a very superficial resemblance in some of the work to the styles of some of the artists. Um, but in the end, personally, I have to judge the whole business on how good the drawing and painting quality is in the end, and it's very poor. Um, if those artists had drawn and painted in that fashion, uh, there's no way their work would be hanging in the galleries of the world. Well, there's certainly a strange talent operating here. But these second-hand productions are mere pale shadows of the original works of art. They almost suggest that even if we do survive death, our skills don't. As a writer, I'm not prepared to accept those terms. What I find most depressing about the claims of the spiritualists is that so often they turn out to be deceptive. Spiritualism was tainted with fraud from the start. Margareta Fox, one of the founding sisters, confessed in 1888 that she'd faked the spirit raps by clicking her toes. There were scandalous court cases. Henry Cavendish sued three charlatans for the return of a quarter of a million pounds. Many mediums were caught using conjuring apparatus. In this chair, the unscrupulous Mr. Eldred hid all the props for a spectacular spirit show until he was exposed in 1903. The great escape artist, Harry Houdini, tirelessly campaigned against the charlatans of the spiritualist world. He used his experience as a magician to expose their tricks. In 1944, Scottish medium Helen Duncan was jailed for fraud. Skeptics said her spirits were made of cardboard, coat hangers and old vests. Even Camp Chesterfield suffered from scandals. In 1960, the Psychic Observer came out in mourning. Fraud had been uncovered at the camp. Editor Tom O'Neill had believed that an infrared camera would provide proof that spirit materialization was genuine. He was welcomed by the camp authorities. But to everyone's horror, the film showed all too clearly that the spirits were far from dead. The mysterious forms were actually well-known camp staff swathed in chiffon.